Hello and welcome to How to LMMS. Today I'm going to be going through the new update for LMMS. Uh, it's version 1.2. Uh, you can get it from the, the LMMS website here, 1.2.0. I've just got around to downloading it. Um, I've had a little look around myself and discovered quite a few things that have changed that are very subtle things but they'll make a lot of difference um, to your experience. So. Um, I'll be doing a comparison with the previous version, which was um, this version 1.1.3, and it's been four years, I think, since this was released, uh, so this is a really exciting update. Uh, as you can tell, this one has a completely redesigned UI. As you can see, the difference between the two is quite obvious. This one's got a much more block color based design, the way that I see it, whereas this one has more gradients, you know, I mean, you can look at it yourself. So, a huge change in UI. The same goes for all of the individual aspects, like triple oscillator used to be like this, you know, basically everything about this program uh, has changed in some way. So, I'm going to be running through this as fast as I can. So overall, um, up here, nothing much has changed. You've still got all of the different buttons. Uh, they've been redesigned, the icons. Um, but you do have this button, which is the metronome. So uh, whereas before in LMMS, you'd have to click this button to play the metronome along with the recording. Now, just like in many other DAWs, you can toggle metronome. So when you're playing something, um, no metronome. And this goes for the same for if you're recording and, you know. So I think that's a really good addition. Uh, you can tell that it's got a bit, bit more of a nice sound as well. Up in the file menu, you've got several new things. So first of all, new from template. LMS now comes with a lot of new templates like for different drum layouts. This is very simple, as you know, just for beat and bass man editor. Uh, but the exciting thing is that you can save your projects as a template. So if you find yourself making the same sort of song over and over again, you'll be able to save your project. And down here, there is now a new file type, LMS project template, MPT. There is a dedicated templates folder for you to save your templates to. The way that you load up is new from template and your template will appear down here. You can also save your project as a default template. So um, if you're like me and you like to have a specific drum layout every time, so my kick there, my snare there, and my hi-hats there. Um, now you can save your project as the default template so that when you click new, there you are. The project loads as it was, um, and that's really handy so you get a quick startup for each of your projects. Other than that, you've also got export MIDI which you couldn't do before. You could only import MIDI. Uh, so exporting MIDI is something that's been added and that's really exciting because that means you can share your projects with anyone that isn't using LMMS. So now onto the song editor. Uh, now there's quite a few things that I'm excited about that have changed here. First of all, you can move tracks around just by clicking on them now. You don't have to click over in this little tiny area. So that makes it so much more handy to rearrange your tracks. You know, uh, that's gonna save so much time for me. What's going to save even more time is uh, the fact that cloning now duplicates the track in its place. So if you've got a track at the top, it stays at the top. Before, in LMS, um, if you cloned a track, it would go to the bottom. And I like to have projects with probably a hundred like tracks, and so I, ha I would have to scroll all the way down, drag it by this little corner and move it up just slowly, and it was just so frustrating. But now, uh, when I duplicate a track, I want it to stay there, so that's what happens. Um, so that's extremely useful. Uh, also in this menu, you can, when it's an instrument track, you can assign this to a new FX channel, or you can just assign it to whatever you've labeled it, and it just really streamlines the process. Um, once again, really, really useful. Little thing, you can now zoom out even further before it was 25%. Now you can zoom out to 12.5. So if you've got a long project, it's going to be easier to move along uh, now. So that's that's really useful. And finally, uh, sample tracks have changed. You can now make them shorter than a bar. So as well as the UI being redesigned, uh, this is very much the same. This is 
identical. Uh, the effects, I'll get onto them later. And the MIDI is the same. But we've now got an option to toggle master pitch. So if you've ever used this tool up here, the master pitch, it transposes the whole project by however many semitones you want. So, um, it, you know, if you want to change key, see what it sounds like, you can do that. But it's a shame when you've got loads of drum samples which get pitched up too. So this feature will be so useful to uh, stop these drum samples being affected. So you can have the same drums or the same non-melodic uh, instruments at the same pitch as they were whilst also changing the key. So uh, I think that's that's a really useful feature. Also up here, something that you might miss is the fact that you can now cycle through all of your tracks. So every instrument plugin that you could put on here, um, you can cycle through using these arrows, which is so useful for me because when I have loads of tracks and I want to assign them to effects, channels, you know, now that there's even um, an easy way of doing that, but it can be even easier, um, you can just cycle through, change the effect, cycle through, change the effect. It's really, really happy that that's there. Um, the range for pitch modulation as well, that's gone up to 60. It used to be 24, so you could only go up 24 semitones, so two octaves but now it's gone up to 60. Um, that's pretty much it for the instrument plugin window. So that's the song editor and everything that, that I've noticed uh, that's changed in that. I'm going to go on to automation tracks now. Not much has changed. You've still got the three modes um, and you've also got the tension for this mode. Uh, but one thing that has changed is for the entire block you can invert vertically or horizontally, uh, which I will probably find a use for. Definitely could have its uses. Moving on, the beat and baseline editor is basically the same as it was before, um, but you can now uh, clone steps, so if I make a pattern, I can now clone it, which is useful for repeats um, when you want to alter something else in another track. Uh, you can now add sample tracks. I haven't experimented much with this, but this could have good implications. So one thing I missed out is the view menu that now exists. Uh, you can view all of the basic windows that you need um, and there's some handy things that used to be in settings. Um, now you can just switch between them and not have to restart the program so that's handy. Uh, smooth scroll, volume and note labels and piano roll which brings me to the piano roll. It's also had some exciting changes. As you can see the piano roll uh, note labels are down the side now uh, as opposed to a horrible display of notes in there uh, so you do have to use your initiative to find the sharps but that's good to teach you really not much has changed obviously the UI has changed you've got to get used to the the different resizing and all of that it works in pretty much exactly the same way uh, one exciting button though is uh, the quantize button so uh, I'll just I'll record just record some notes. Um, that's horrific mess of out of time things. Um, but if I change the quantize down to one hour sixteen and quantize it, all of the notes they just snap to the ne the nearest sixteenth notes. It has some very powerful uses for uh, people who like to record live uh, MIDI input. So other than that, so the looping, and this goes for the main song editor as well, it works in exactly the same way, but it makes it easier to see exactly where you're looping to, um, but the same controls apply to move the loop section. If you right click on uh, a note, there's a lot more options now. You can mark and mark the current semitone, you can mark the corresponding octaves, so if you want to mark a D on every octave, then it, it's, it saves time. Uh, you can mark a current scale that you have set up here. You can mark a current chord that you have set up here. Um, you can unmark everything. And you can select all notes on this key, so if you have a load of notes, you want to change sharps to a flat, you can select all notes, move them up. Uh, that's everything for the piano roll.
So all we have left now are the FX mixer and the effects themselves, which are the most exciting, I think. The FX mixer hasn't had too many crazy changes, um, but now you can solo a track without having to mute all of the others, uh, which is really handy. Um, you still can't move them just by dragging, which is a shame, but you can still move left and right like that. Um, you can delete with the delete key now, which is handy. Uh, one really useful thing though that they've added is remove unused channels. So when I'm making a huge project and I've got 30 plus channels and I've got hundreds of tracks that are linked to these, I don't want to go through every single one to check which ones I've been used, so I end up with a load of unused tracks that I added accidentally. But just to clean things up, you just remove unused channels, it takes away everything that you haven't added anything to and oh, just I'm so glad about that. And that leaves us with the effects. So, when you click add effect, uh, not only can you still filter, but you can also sort them based on type or name, uh, which is very useful. There are also some new LMMS plugins. Uh, here they are. Uh, and there's a flanger effect, um, which I haven't pushed to its limits yet, but just to let you know that, that that's there. And there is an equalizer plugin, which is very exciting because it finally has a native plugin to LMMS with a graphic EQ. Um, so you can move the points around here. It's got an analyzer in it as well. So uh, when you when you have a tune playing, so you can see the frequencies. It makes it so much easier to go through the EQing process, you know, um, and obviously you can change the bandwidth of each one as well. Uh, yeah, it's just such a good tool that it really needed to be added because it's such a basic thing in most doors. Um, yeah, so that's essentially everything to do with this update um, that I can find. Make sure that you let me know in the comments if there are anything that I've missed. Um, if there's anything that you like, anything you want to say about anything really, just comment below. I hope that you found this video useful. Um, you know, I've waffled on a bit, but that's because you know I've used this software for years and years, and having these features is so useful for me, and I think that it must be useful for some of you out there. So enjoy making music and keep using the LMMS and donate if possible. Uh, I'm not one of the team but um, I know that they work really hard. So thanks for using LMMS and I will see you in the next video.